Thank you for the great introduction. And um, it, it sounds strange to say 17 years ago, you know, geez. Anyway, the talk is not about Google. Well, it's partly about Google. Let's, let's start. We don't have much time. Uh, it's about a journey, a journey that we are doing as, a, uh, as men, women, humanity, the journey of progress, the journey of technology. And uh, as you can see from the title, the title is The Short Blanket Syndrome. So what is the Short Blanket Syndrome? Um, it's based on a metaphor. Uh, our progress is getting us more comfortable. It's, a, it's like of a comfy blanket, right? So we are uh, cold and we put the blanket of, uh, the blanket of the progress, right? And uh, yes, if you're thinking about Linux, yes, it's precisely that, you know. Happiness is a warm blanket, right? But it is also a short blanket. Because the fascinating thing about technology and also a good part of our society, uh, because you know that society and technology are two sides of the same coin, is that there is always a short blanket, no matter how you try to improve the, uh, 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 the condition of men. So let's just start with some very simple example of this trade-off between uh, one technology advance and the other. Let's go back in time. So for instance, where it all started, the Industrial Revolution, right? We got these machines and now we have everything and more. Yes, but something happened. So the blanket gets our more comfy and the people at the time start working much more. We are working much more than our ancestors. So ooh, ooh, the blanket, you know, left our feet cold, but yes, but we are, we have, uh, we are full of technology, right? We have uh, everything we want, uh, but still, uh, if you measure the level of stress, we are more stressed than our ancestor that didn't have all of these beauties, right? So our level of stress is getting up and another side of the blanket is leaving our feet cold. And we need cakes, right? We need a lot of cakes. Stress is dessert spelled backwards. That's the other part of the blanket that is getting bigger and bigger. We also progressed in other directions, right? We started writing, and we had this strange 1.0 things, paper thing, you know, uh, called books, right? Do, do you remember those in the old ages? You know, we had books, uh, and who wants books, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's just archaeologic, so we get better and better, and we miniaturize things. Information gets smaller, right? It gets smaller, it's great. Who wants a book rather than this, right? <laughs> but something happens. So think about these things, but we don't have more. We don't have any more right now. We have very small uh, memories, okay. But things, uh, the things our ancestor had, like this, this, okay, these are, this is really old, man. It's the Lascaux cave, uh, you know. And it still survived. So the average life of our memories is infinitely shorter than this kind of information. So we are miniaturizing things, but we are losing another side of a blanket that is with the things we have right now. Our information is much more fragile. Okay. So not, not a good thing. Okay. Stone. Information carved in stone like the uh, 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 Rosetta stone that you see right here has still survived. A CD doesn't last even 15 years, okay? So you can imagine that the blanket is kind of dangerous, but we have, you know, we, we live in this era, the era of a smartphone, right? Great, so we had this and our ancestor didn't have this. We have more processing power in our smartphone than the poor guys went in on the moon, you know, had at the time. But uh, the blanket, the technology blanket is always there. It's, it's not very clear, maybe, but it's still there. The quality of sound calls uh, was better in the first generation phones, the, the kind of bulky, strange things that nobody would even dare to look at right now, okay, than uh, the smartphones we have right now. Because the blanket of technology is pulling one side uh, and the other. We have more phone calls possible per square mile, because we want more phone calls. So we want everybody to be able to, uh, uh, to bring a cell phone. And we had to compress sound. Compressor sound gives us a much worse quality than the first users of these strange uh, monsters here had. Okay, so the, uh, the blanket is progressing. Uh, it's all very exciting, at least to me. Okay, uh, I know I shouldn't say the word exciting with such a slide, but 
trust me, okay. It's all very exciting because even if you can see it, but if you look further, there is always a part of the, of the bed that stays uh, with your feet cold, okay. Everywhere, in the web, uh, in all of technology, in good part of our society, is there. And learning where the, uh, the blanket shifts can give you a very good idea of what can be a successful technology or what is not a successful technology. Because sometimes you preoccupy yourself only on one side on the bed and you leave part of the bed uh, in the open. So let's relax, okay. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, we have this blanket floating around. Uh, everything changes. It would be good also uh, beyond this blanket to know what the future is uh, getting us. Right? Like, uh, uh, why are we living in this future rather than another future? Can we draw some lines? Uh, what are the possible paths? And why are we in this specific technology and progress path? Okay, so that's the point also of the talk. Because sometimes we do very strange things, apparently. Some paths that we are following look strange, uh, unless you look at it in a wider perspective and you can see where the blankets are going. Okay, but since we're talking about blankets, the strangest things we do, if you just think about it, is, you know, is share the same blanket with somebody else. <laughs> right, uh, as the saying goes, marriage is the art of dividing by two the problems that alone you didn't have. <laughs> we are really strange, you know. So anyway, that's, that's just an aside. It's, uh, it's a joke, uh, well, not, not so much of a joke, but anyway, uh, let's, <laughs> let's look at the progress. What, what happens with time, okay? And we are lucky because there is a constant. It is true that everything is changing, but there is a constant. A constant is man. Man has always stayed the same. Man can have uh, smartphones, uh, uh, cars, uh, airplanes, but the constant in time is always man. Okay, man hasn't really changed at all from our ancestor to now. So the key to understand actually why our progress is developing this way is to look at the only constant that we have in time, that is man. Okay, so think about man, the, the, uh, the caveman, you know, that, that we all uh, descend from. What is the way of working that these guys had? Okay, it's actually very simple. Keep calm and survive. So the work cycle of this guy was very easy. Get up, survive, <laughs> go back to bed. <laughs> Actually, they didn't even have a bed. They had a rock, but that's, that's another point. So it's, it's very easy, right? It, it looks easy, life was easy, and then we kind of complicated it. With, we got more cherries on top of the cake. So let's, let's see what happens. What happens is if, if you just start from this only focus point, survival, okay? The, the pressure of man to survive is what shaped his life and is what is also shaping our life today. And you can measure things like cost and benefit. So if you start from this single portion, okay, you can derive cost-benefit equation and look at what happens and why uh, uh, humanity chose a, a one, one specific pet rather than another one. So for instance, very simple example to start with. Okay, we, we started with keyboards, we went on with the mouse, and now we have touch. Okay, and it, it's a specific direction we, we, we chose. It's very easy to understand why we went to touch, right? Touch is very uh, user-friendly, it's uh, easier than a keyboard. We don't learn uh, uh, how to use a keyboard unless somebody uh, teaches us, but we lose precision. Okay, so the blanket is still here. The technology, the uh, techno blanket is still here. We are taking the blanket, losing precision, because our finger is a terrible pointer, as you might have noted, you know, writing those tiny characters rather than on a, on a very comfortable keyboard. So we are shifting the blanket, but there is a direction. The direction is, remember, caveman logic. Okay, caveman has hands. Okay, you can see here, the, one of the very first works of art by our caveman ancestor, the, uh, the cave of hands in Spain. Okay, hands uh, is part of our survival kit. Okay, we developed hands to survive. We didn't develop keyboards to survive, right? So that's, that's a, that's a uh, uh, direction that we're following inspired by caveman logic. TV, very, another very simple example. We started with these terrible things, uh, cathodic ray, TVs, now we have these beautiful flat TVs uh, that have changed. 16.9 versus 
three, right? Barash has, has, uh, uh, has expanded. Why it has expanded? Mm. The blanket is still here because we have lost uh, part of the screen, the upper part and the bottom part. If you program uh, code for uh, computers, you are not happy because you like more vertical space rather than horizontal space. So the blanket is still there, but caveman is also there. Caveman logic is saying, you know, where, how, how can I survive best? You know, where are the dangers coming from? Left and right, mostly, you know, not bottom or up. So I prefer horizontal vision rather than vertical. That's why we have horizontal eyes and we're not like, you know, those strange <laughs> sci-fi people with two eyes uh, vertical, right? So it's very easy once you look at Cayman logic. Multitasking, you know, it's, it's the, uh, it's the uh, glorious days of multitasking. We switch, uh, we check emails, you know. What scientists have proved is that multitasking gets us dumber. Really, uh, our cognitive abilities are severely impacted by multitasking. You know, like you are, you are doing something, you know, and then you, you just switch. Uh, sorry, I think I just got a phone call. Um, if you switch, uh, doing things like this, uh, okay, you get dumber because you interrupt things and you never get deep into the things. And it's, it's really scary if you look at these, these studies. But why do we do this if it's impacting our cognitive abilities and we can't think deeper anymore. Because came in logic, instant gratification, okay. We are working hard, an email arrives, gee, thank God an email is arriving. Let's, let's have a look what's happening here. We interrupt, we go to something, maybe it's boring, but we still interrupt and we procrastinate and we go on, it's instant gratification. It's the short term versus the long term, okay. Caveman logic is short term. I need to survive today. I don't put my rocks in a bank account for, for the future. Okay, I just need to survive today, short term. That's, that's why we are short term, uh, we are all based on a short term logic, like uh, these effects show us. Okay, it's all come from this guy here. Also privacy, privacy is the perfect example of short term versus long term based on the caveman logic. We gave up to privacy completely because it's long term, who cares? I want to chat right now. I want to see Facebook now. Who cares about uh, my rocks in the bank accounts, right? So privacy lost. So keep calm and survive, that's the focus point. It's, it's all measurable, I'm just giving you hints, okay? Another, Another example is, for instance, uh, 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 remotes, okay. What happens is that when we're using a remote, you might have noticed it's full of keys. Full, right. People don't use these keys. <laughs> really, I mean, do you know your, your remote? Can you tell what is the second uh, bottom uh, uh, key down there? Nobody uses it. That's what we use. Okay, we use that. <laughs> On and off. Channel plus one, minus one, volume up, volume down. Okay. Maybe a mute if we are technology, you know, we, we want to be bold. Let, let's mute the, the TV, okay. And this is precisely Cayman logic because what is happening inside our brain, which is the same of our ancestors, that we're trying to minimize our computational effort. And strange things happen, like we, we need to go from channel two to channel nine, we don't press nine. We go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's caveman, you know, with the remote. It's caveman logic. Minimization of the computational effort. Why? Because we're saving energy. And the more energy I save, the more my chances of survival are high. Okay, and the same movements, the same strange movements happen on the web, okay. If you measure the movements we do on web pages, you find exactly the same patterns that we find when people switch a channel via their, their remote, okay. Think about Star Trek, for instance, okay. Star Trek, uh, you know this, this guy, James T. Kirk, okay, he, was, he used to say, computer, do this, computer, tell me that, okay. They even had holograms, you know, in the later uh, sequels, you know, holograms with uh, AI, and now we have this. Now we have this thing here. And you can see the reaction of William Shatner, <laughs> right? Uh, gee, we have this. Where, where is my computer, intelligent, smart, brainy computers? It's our fault, or 
better. It's caveman faults, okay? Because this is one of the first search engines that existed before Google, Alta Vista, okay? Alta Vista tried to improve from the caveman search engine where you just put something, you know, and you hope that the result comes up. And they try to improve. They try to say, well, tell me more of what you are trying to look. Uh, uh, give me hints. Uh, let's talk. Okay, let's, let's be good, good friends. Let's talk. It didn't work. The caveman in us says, what? Do I need to do more computational effort to get my answer? Gee, I, I don't want. Uh, I want to survive. Preserve my energy, please. Okay, so we are still stuck with the old way uh, old good time search engines. Okay, so what happens is that you can actually plot all this. You can construct a, a surface uh, of the trade-off between cost and benefits with the survival focus. Okay, and you can shape what is our progress line. Okay, so strange things happen. Like not always the path that we are following is the apparently shortest one. It might it might be longer, but it's not strange because it's just following these trade-offs based on the survival. Cayman logic, okay. In some cases, the blanket doesn't really float freely because uh, let's just do a quick uh, exercise. Time is running short. Let's go back in time. Okay, we have these guys here, you know, and let's uh, turn off time upside down. Let's do a journey in time through alternate realities and we land in a planet that is like Earth, but where telephone history has gone differently than us. In those planets, an alternate reality, phone calls are all free. Just for some advertisement in front of the call, maybe in the middle, maybe in the end, but you're free to switch telephone, uh, telephone company. Just if you switch from the major company, you cannot phone to everybody, actually. You, uh, you can only phone to five or 10 or 100 people, and maybe your friends are not there. But you would say, gee, these guys are crazy, right? It's a strange line of progress they had. Uh, it's our line of progress concerning search engine, Facebook, okay, Twitter. It's the same line of progress we are in. We are stuck in that situation. So sometimes what happens is that you have a better future, okay, probably a better future for, whole, for, the, uh, uh, for the whole of us, but you get stuck uh, in a local minimum of this progress surface, okay. You would just need something to happen for the ball of our situation to just let us slide down towards a better future. But it's a complex situation, and that's why sometimes we get stuck uh, in this thing. Also, the social component. Social component, very quickly, is very easy. Why do uh, uh, Facebook, uh, Facebook is more uh, common than Google nowadays? It comes from the very first blanket. The very first blanket that our caveman had was two pulsions. I need to be egoistic. I need to survive, right? Keep calm and survive. But what actually changed the history of man versus the other animals was his society, his uh, social attitudes, okay? It's the real thing that gave man a real kick. I survive much better with the help of the others. I pay a price, sociality, I help uh, other people, okay? But what happens is that uh, I also get much, uh, much benefit. And it's very interesting. You, you get a lot of uh, 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 passions deriving from this uh, short blanket. Uh, for instance, consider this same talk. I've run, uh, run out of time. I'll try to be very quick. Why are you here? Guys, why are you, are you here? It's everybody, uh, everything is on YouTube. <laughs> why are you here, right? You are here because our social caveman logic is working for us, okay? And we like more visual rather than text, okay? We are visual based. So these two passions make us here rather than at home, okay? So what also happens is when we shape society, other things happen. When we reach a certain level of complexity, we need a level up, okay? Democracy works this way. You need to build another level up, representative democracy. I don't want to do choices, consume, consume my energy. I vote somebody and he does the things for me, okay? The web worked the, the same way. It reached a certain amount of complexity, it grew up too much, and then, tuck, upper layer, Google, Came up. Google is the next layer in the hierarchy, all based on Cayman logic. Okay, the same thing for apps. Okay, apps in a, a, a mobile phone actually actually started this way already from an upper layer. We are stuck to the Play Store. 
Okay, so it's all based on this. I just conclude that you can plot, you can measure everything. There is no homo technologicus. The real source of our progress and of our past is keep calm and survive. Thank you.